Coming up on today's episode, where do projector screens come from, Robert? Help hanging your HDTV on the cheap. Where do your surround sound speakers actually belong? An endless supply of free HD animal video and the Blu-ray releases for the week of September 1st, 2009. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Gamefly, Netflix, and GoDaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Over the air, Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, if it's in HD, we are all for it. Rumor has it, you found an <laughs> endless source of animal videos. It, it, so far, it's pretty endless, actually. I love the Animals Eating Animals shows, and they also do other things on those shows we don't talk about here, but I got an email from the folks at earth-touch.com. You might have seen their video gracing the walls of TVs at your local Walmart. More importantly, the group releases several videos every week at earth-touch.com that you could download in 720p. Insect frenzies, feeding frenzies of the 2009 sardine run, crocodiles, and my new favorite animal name, Sloggett's Ice Rats in action. They're like gophers, but weirder. The company's pretty interesting. They aim to film, package, and broadcast within 48 hours of the video being shot. I think they're better known down in Australia and South Africa, but the site is definitely worth checking out, and it's free. Awesome. They like awesome. Up to, and like Several times a week, they put up new videos. And, and it's free? It's free. And it's free? So and I can just connect the computer to the TV and just... What format? Do you know uh, him? It's, I want to say it's 720p in a move file, but okay. I don't know the specifics. So it's probably like MPEG-4. Yeah. Cool. It looks good. Awesome. It looks really good. Let's talk about you pissing off some professional recording mixers with your quote-unquote noise comment regarding surround sound channels in last week's show. The thing is, especially with the 5.1 system, you're more sort of adding extra noise back there. Yeah, Mr. Audio Geek at Revision 3 manages to piss off apparently a large portion of Hollywood, or at least a couple of our buddy Mauricio's friends, uh, with a sucktastic word choice. Uh, Mauricio's friend Marshall, who worked on, Mauricio's our editor, his friend Marshall worked on Rambo, Blade, Twilight, Van Wilder. He also happens to be a pretty talented guy, because I've heard his work. But look, I, apparently I, I really miffed him and a lot of other people by insulting the art of, of mixing audio for surround sound. Let's talk about this. Look, surround sounds on the floor that I was talking about last week, it's a hack. If you, Especially if you have no kind of Z-depth to your room, if there's not much space behind your couch. Totally. Or, or your sides seats. even. Right. Small I, rooms are hard. If small rooms are extremely difficult. Ideally, your, your surround sound placement is just above ear level and behind you. In a 5.1 system, about 100 to 110 degrees to the rear surrounds. And when I say this, there's your HDTV, your center channel is at zero degrees, depending on, and Dolby's got some great articles that we'll link to that basically tell you where to start, right? They, they tell you to start with degrees based on the room. So you've got your sweet spot, that's the center of, of the sound stage you're trying to create, like 22 to 30 degrees, depending on how far you are from the HDTV. And then your 5.1 surrounds, 100 and 110 degrees to the rear surrounds to your left and right and behind you. In a 7.1 system, the left and right surrounds are 90 to 100 degrees, basically left and right from you from that sweet spot, the center of your, your main seat in the room. Again, just above ear level, and the left and right back speakers go to 135 to 150 degrees behind you, basically off access to the left and right. Regardless of where you end up putting the speakers too, there is some flexibility like you were talking yeah. about, but there's two issues you're dealing with. One is the volume level, how, how loud the sounds are, and timing of the sounds right. as well. So that's the other thing. Once you get them placed where you want, you have to go back and verify, okay, all, all from all speakers, I'm getting equal, equal sound levels at this point, the sweet spot, the listening position, as well as timing so that, you know, if you're expecting sounds coming out of two or three different speakers at once to all reach that point at the same time, especially yeah. if you're dealing with larger rooms or just different distances. And I mean, even a couple of feet can make a difference. Yeah, and when basically when you're setting up your speakers, it's like, you know, set them up, listen, tweak them a few inches out, a few inches in, listen, tune, listen, tweak, listen, tune, because the idea is you're trying to create a cohesive sound stage that basically envelops your, your center position, your perfect spot, that center of the couch, with a beautiful, you know, wall, you know, a beautiful, just sort of a, you know, a, a, a a sound stage imagery just you'll know when it's there because you can feel it like when you're at a really good theater um, moving me, the speakers was... farther out makes the sound stage bigger moving the speakers in kind of tightens it up around that center it's spot. also just more difficult 
for speakers that are very close to the listening position to help right. balance that against speakers that are placed further away. Usually the speakers that are, you know, they're front, center, and left mm -hmm. are trying to balance those can be difficult. But when you get it right, though, I was watching some of the new preseason NFL games, and some of the surround work they do just to make you feel like you're sitting in the stadium is just awesome. Yeah, I do love that. It, one of the nice things about some of the, the more modern AV receivers that have come out is they basically have a microphone. You place the microphone in your center position, and it helps you set up everything. You just leave, I guess play like playing pink noise or white noise, and then adjust Those the levels. Test tones are usually built into like an yeah. AV receiver, but you can also do something similar with a, a simple test disc and a twenty dollars sound meter from Radio Shack. Yeah. Get, get the basic setup right. Yeah, and and look, I I love a well set up surround system. What I was talking about was basically a hack if you're in a, what I will affectionately refer to as an unfortunate listening environment for your home theater, which definitely describes my current home state. <laughs> it's just You're dealing with the children. I'm dealing with the children <laughs> and I'm dealing with the, the world's narrowest living room of doom. Oh. So we'll, we'll do a definitive episode on speaker placement in the future. You're but a candidate I just, for dipoles. I'm failing it. I am a candidate <laughs> for dipoles. Anybody with no room behind them is a candidate for dipoles. Look, up next, we're going to talk about our favorite cult movies, but first let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Video games aren't cheap and sometimes they suck. If you're dropping 50 bucks for a new title, you can get stuck. Enter Gamefly, the largest online video game rental service. They've got over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Instead of gambling 50 bucks on a new game, how about $15.95 a month to become a Gamefly member and you can rent one to four games at a time, keep them for as long as you like and decide if you like them before you drop the big bucks. No late fees, no due dates, shipping is always free. So once you're done playing a game, send it back. Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you like the game you're playing, if you really like it, click keep it on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Discounts are good. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. And if you've grown tired of a title you already own, trade it in. Used games can be used as credit towards membership fees. What could top all that? How about a two-week free trial? HD Nation fans get a two-week free trial when they sign up at Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. Some restrictions apply. See the site for details and please support HD Nation by trying out our sponsors like Gamefly. One thing you can say about HD and home theater buffs is that without a doubt, we are film fanatics. We like movies and we definitely love the cult movies. So right now, we're gonna bust out our top five cult movies available in HD, or at least the top five we settled on after a long drawn out fight between Team HD Nation members. Well, <laughs> look, this is at least one each of our favorite on a list of five cult movies. This one, though, I think we all did love. I, uh, <laughs> anyway, at number five. Okay, we oh, love, you've never seen it. <laughs> I have yet to actually see the whole movie. I gotta sit down and just watch. I actually own the movie. Uh, bad. Anyway, me. The Warriors. You have a copy of this? I do. We should watch it tonight. Okay. Tell them about it. Okay. I should. <laughs> and let me say, it's a 1979 film based on a 1965 novel by a gentleman named Sol Urich. It takes place in the gang-infested streets of New York City. Now, after being framed for the murder of a gang leader, the Warriors must fight through an army of rival gangs to reach their safe sanctuary of their Coney Island home turf. Warriors, now, <laughs> come out of play! While the gangs appear gimmicky and the movie does reflect a period of time in New York City when many thought the city would be lost to street crime, corruption, and apathy, it's fun. It's a cult classic. If you haven't seen it, you need to rent it, borrow it, have a festival of friends. You can build amazing drinking games around that. And I Dangerous. don't even drink, and I can think of at least four we can come shots up with. Of espresso. Oh my goodness, I can do that. At number four, <laughs> A Clockwork Orange, another novel to film adaptation. A Clockwork Orange has been described quite accurately as one of Stanley Kubrick's most disturbing movies. Starring, well, Malcolm McDowell when he was like 12, and in the role that basically prevented him from working in movies for the next 20 years or so, he plays Alex DeLarge. A Clockwork Orange chronicles his transition from a petulant, psychopathic delinquent who just happens to love Beethoven to model citizen, at least temporarily. With allusions to the breakdown of the moral fabric of society, venial politicians who care for a little more than their own reputation, and, well, the best ever version of Singing in the Rain you're gonna see on television, or, well, in, in, in your home theater. It's, it'll stay with you. Aww. You need to see it. Number three. The, the Princess, Princess Bride. Bride. This is Ponies. a Rob Reiner fairy tale story gone awry. It's based on William Goldman's novel of the same name, and it's perfect for young and old alike. Now, it stars Carrie Elways as the swashbuckling hero who must save the love of his life from the clutches of the evil prince. As he gains the wish. assistance of swordman Anigo Montoya and to die. the giant wrestler Fezzik. 
<laughs> anyway, Andre. if you want action, romance, comedy, sharp whip, and classic one-liners. And a great sword fight. Yes, the Princess Bride is it. Absolutely. And anything with Andre the Giant. <clears throat> I miss that guy. I do. I do. Hey, number two, Blade Runner. Look, you may not be a fan of Philip K. Dick's writing, but this is a great adaptation of a sci-fi story. Ridley Scott brings an amazing vision of a dystopian future where man has perfected the creation of synthetic humans only to chain them with limited life. Decker must track down, he's at, well, Decker's Harrison Ford. He's got to track down renegade human replicants who come to the Earth seeking a way to extend their lives no matter what the cost. It is an epic visual feast. And there's like seven different versions of it, like the director's cut, the other director's cut, the studios and take the director's cut, the original cut, the one you saw in the theater. It's freaking confusing. It, How, which one should I watch? I mean, I, I watched the original in the theater. Well, I, I believe and starting I with some that DVD one, version and then you can move the way, on but... to the director's cut. Okay. In any case, they're all visually stunning. It has an energy and intensity and feel all of its own. The acting is spectacular and the sets are just Unnerving. Rutger Howard. Mm. Mm. Edward James almost too. Mm. That's a good folks. Yeah. Movie. Awesome. Great cast. At number one, Army of Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're talking the third installment of the Evil Dead series. Army of Darkness is single-handedly responsible for Bruce Campbell's rise to cult superstar status. <sighs> Unmistakably campy, Army of Darkness turns classic zombie undead sorcery tropes on their head as Bruce Campbell's ash brings his 20th century know-how, martial arts, and attitude to stop the evil undead from rising up and conquering the human kingdoms. Now, with lines like, give me some sugar, baby, and shop smart, shop S-mart, you're guaranteed a picture that will have you in stitches and on the edge of your seat. Oh my goodness. If you haven't seen it, you'll either love it or you'll basically email us really angry about wasting two hours of your time. <laughs> of course, there are a, well, actually quite a few cult films that that aren't available on Blu-ray that we wish were. We'll save that list for another day. Right now, though, we're gonna give you the Blu-ray releases for September 1st, 2009. Brace yourselves, people. Braveheart, CSI The Ninth Season, The Girl Next Door, Unrated, Gladiator, Woohoo! Heroes Season 3, High Crimes, MASH, yes, Monster, oh dear, State of Play, <laughs> and Supernatural, the complete fourth season. Coming up, Mr. Heron's trip down to SoCal to learn how screens are made for projectors. Right now, though, let's thank one of the sponsors that helps us bring you the show. Take a walk to the nearest video store by my house, and you can rent VHS tapes in Chinese. Chances are your local video store at least has DVDs. If you rent using Netflix, you can have Blu-ray discs shipped straight to your door. Netflix has over 90,000 titles online, including a ton of Blu-ray offerings with free shipping to your home and back. And with over 40 shipping centers in the U.S., almost all Netflix deliveries happen in a single business day. DVD-only plans start from $4.99. You can get a no-risk two-week free trial membership at www.netflix.com slash hdnation. And do us a favor, don't forget to type the www when you're using this code. Please support HD Nation by supporting our sponsors like Netflix. So last week I headed out to Southern California, Torrance to be exact, to check out Stewart Film Screen. Now if you've never heard of Stewart Film Screen, they are the makers of projection screens for theater, commercial, and home use. So if you've seen a movie, you've probably seen a movie on a Stewart Film Screen at one I should say you've seen a movie in a theater. It, it could be very likely. Now if you've ever been to one of the amusement parks that's owned by operated by Disney, Every screen that they have is actually built and designed by Stewart. And about for all of the movies that are scored in terms of their audio, we were talking earlier about scoring movies, about 90% of movies are scored using a Stewart film screen. So, I mean, how does the Cadillac of film screen start? I mean, big rolls of vinyl in a shed, or what did you Made see? Made from scratch. Really? They actually start out with bags of vinyl powder, the resin itself, and these get cooked together in these pots that heat up along with acetone and fire retardants. I like saying that word. Did they give you like a, a respirator while no. you were in there? There were some rooms too uh, that were very, very fumy. Fumy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> some very happy, happy people working there. So when it when it talks about once they mix that material together in these in these huge basically cooking pots, the industrial sized ones, it's then piped into a room that we weren't allowed to actually take any pictures of whatsoever. It's the one of the few super secret rooms they had. Essentially it's a spray system. These are actually sprayed onto a mold oh, and wow. then removed. And using that process, they're able to create a, a screen size up to 40, 40 by 90, 50 by, I wanna say 40 by 90 with wow. no seams whatsoever. Perfect. And for that's, your uh, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> now, in addition to the chemical rooms, some of the screens are actually perforated to make them sound transparent. 
And in order to do that, they got to punch holes through them. But when they first pull the vinyl out of the molds, it's it's too soft. It's rubbery. It's bubblegummy. So if they start trying to punch holes through that, it, it becomes just stretches. A, yeah, it would just be a mess. So what they end up having is a heat room. It's actually using waste heat from the other processes they have going on, and it's actually right above the spray room where the actual screens are made. And they lay these out for up to four or five days, and after they're done curing, then they're taken over for further processing, namely the uh, the perforation system. Oh, that's wow. just for the perforated screens, and that's literally, like I said, just for audio transparency. So if you're going to play speakers behind the screen, you want a perforated screen for that. It's pretty common in a lot of theaters with surround sound. Oh, oh for th commercial theaters, definitely. And even for more and more home theater systems, wow. you're putting speakers behind well, the screen. Do they do like small th screens for home theaters too? or Any size. Actually, rear projection TV screens as well. One of the keys of them being able to build their own screens and and the processes that go into it is the top surfaces for coatings for front projection systems uh -huh. or the more transparent screens for rear projection. They can actually bias the screen one way or another to make up for deficiencies in the projection system. Oh, wow. Say your projector's a little too blue. They could then tweak the screen material to minimize that artifact and things like that. Now, there were a lot of chemicals and resins and things being cooked up and that created a lot of you know, waste, I guess effluent or whatever you want to call it coming out of the top. Either. They actually had a pretty great environmental control system that monitored that, that excess gases being released and it would cook it off at up to 1700 degrees before wow. it, just to make sure everything's clean before it hits the environment. Now, we were getting back to the perforation systems. Now when they do that, they actually have a $350,000 machine that they used to punch these holes. They wouldn't let us take a picture of that it's machine. Like a guy with an ice pick. <laughs> but no, actually, it, it reminded me, it's very mechanical, very hands-on operator where they just punch the holes through the machine. But that is for what they call their micro perf system. And now there's two different kinds. They have a studio perf, a cinema perf, excuse me, and a micro perf brand. Micro perf holes are very, very tiny. And that's ideally suited for if you're sitting pretty close to the screen where you could notice that hole structure. Right. And the, the more traditional cinema perf screens, which are done on a, on a tube machine, basically you can run the whole tube of material in there at once and it's fairly automated. That's more for commercial venues where you're sitting much further back. Got it. And again, it's just for the simple transparency. Now, to mount these screens, Stewart's very big on just quality and they stick with anodized tubing, about three and a half inch tubing. This stuff was everywhere. And <sighs> In order to make it anodized for just corrosion protection and the other benefits you get out of right. anodizing I mean, you, material. You basically, it's an acid bath. It's anodizing is oxidation that's been made special. Basically, it's really thick oxidation on the surface of the aluminum. I have a trailer with anodizing. So how do they get a 50-foot frickin' beam or tube of that one, anodized? One of the benefits of being located in Southern California, right near the airport, in LAX is that there are a lot of commercial uh, flight system companies there, oh. including Boeing, Raytheon, and others, as well as the shipping industry. And between those two, they have facilities that can handle 50-foot tubes for anodizing and things like that as well. Now, how do you ship that? Uh, in, they have a whole section, actually, <laughs> that was nothing but custom box construction. And uh, for assembly, they also had a great custom room as well that would show off some of their, their, their curved screen systems as well. Now, in addition to just screen materials, they also work on other projection type systems. One was kind of neat. I have a picture of a globe that's basically being illuminated from the inside out, uh, basically about a two foot diameter globe with a, with a rotating picture, satellite imagery of the earth being rotated around. Mm -hmm. They were actually making about a thousand of these for, I think, Japanese school students, I want to say. But that also gets back to some of the other work they do for the flight industry as well. They're actually, Stewart's big on what they call level D flight simulators for companies like Boeing. So basically what is a level D flight sim? It means that if you train to fly your 757 with a level D sim, you could never actually set foot in a real plane and you could go from that simulator right into a real plane flying real people. And as scary as that sounds, that just gives you some in, in inclination as to how good some of their, their the realism. It's not that I don't trust the FAA or the standards. It's just the whole idea of like, you know, doing a flight sim and then getting into my drive my plane. They're at air traffic control simulators too. They actually have a room wow. that was nearly 360 degrees with rear projection systems behind them to create one seamless three, almost 360 degree view where you walk into it and it looks like you're in one of those towers in an air, con air traffic control system. That to me was just fascinating as can be. Now, the Torrance facility has been there since 1947. That's where really? it was originally. And back in the day, it used to be huge agriculture. Right. So this one building, they've left this one building as is from the <laughs> 40s. That was originally one of the one of the buildings used when the place used to be fields of trees. So I thought it was, you know, it's there. 
and in the midst of everything else they're doing, it was it was pretty awesome. And I'd have to say some of the takeaways I, I, I saw while just viewing this wonderful facility was the hands-on work. There was so much hand labor involved in crafting these screens. I saw a rear projection screen frame being constructed. It was, I believe, 54 feet by 11 feet, aluminum tubing, the guys wow. out there, you know, just getting it all welded up. And then their custom room where they were just doing specialty projects, namely the curved screen systems. and the automated matting where you can have, say you have a 16 by nine or a two, three, five, one screen. Oh, you can have automated mats come in to make it a four by three or a 16 by nine screen. See, yeah, see now Just, I want, oh. now I want a dedicated room with a micro perf screen so I can actually have my center channel directly behind my screen with a seriously bright projector and no windows and I'll be happy. So good trip, man. It, good field trip. It was awesome. <laughs> and the, the other thing too is, oh, it, you really get a sense of this is really where home theater's at. I mean, I, I love flat panels. They're easy and convenient to set up, but when it comes to really doing something that mimics that feeling of being in the theater, nothing beats a projection system. All right. Not at all. Coming up next, our recession selection. But first, let's take a moment to thank one of the sponsors that makes HD Nation possible. GoDaddy. Get reliable, secure web hosting without the long-term contracts. GoDaddy's hosting plans are bigger and better than ever with 99% uptime, free 24-7 support, and no annual commitment. GoDaddy.com makes it easy to customize your own virtual dedicated server. Choose one of three popular plans or select your own Linux or Windows server with all the plan options you need. Want to help support HD Nation and score yourself a discount? Use the code HDN1 to get 10% off your order. Some restrictions apply. See the site for details. And be sure to check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all the HD Nation GoDaddy deals and codes. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. In these tough economic times, we all want to save a buck or two. You know what that means. It's time for our recession selection. This week's selection, inexpensive HDTV wall mounts. Yes, that's right, wall mounts. Your HDTV needs to be seen at a comfortable viewing height and not on the floor. Sure, you can get an entertainment center, a shelf, or a stack of bricks to hold up your TV at eye level, but really, Walmarts are the best way to hang your TV. You save valuable floor space for shelves or a center channel speaker underneath the TV. Now, you can go to an electronic store and pay way too much, or you can shop at places like monoprice.com or Costco and find yourself some fabulous savings. For example, Monoprice has models that will accommodate 37 to 63 inch TVs of no more than 165 pounds, which is a big TV, for as little as 26 bucks. So for 26 bucks, some tools, and the cost of a pack of beer for your neighbor to help you pick the TV up to hang it on the mount, you could be enjoying your HDTV in style at the correct eye level for your viewing. Of course, Monoprice isn't the only game in town. You should definitely do some shopping around, but look, if you're looking for a basic way to hang your HDTV on the wall, you don't have to shell 150 or 300 bucks that some retail stores try to charge you for the same darn thing. Now, totally. That said, some some of the more expensive Walmarts, 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 <laughs> some of the more expensive wall mounts are actually worth the money. Some of them are pretty amazing. The ones that are like super thin, the ones where totally. you have a big articulating arm that actually holds the television in the right position instead of just sort of, you know, but dangling it out there. That's true too. <laughs> Another thing to realize before you take this leap and get a wall mount system, you can't just screw it into the wall. You got to think about how you want to plug everything in as well. Right. So if you're going to have wiring or ideally an electrical outlet placed right behind the screen, you're going to have to get that done ahead of time. And if, in most states I've lived in, you can't just run an extension cord through the wall. <sighs> who's hey, going to notice? Well, who's yeah, who's going to notice? It what if your house burns down? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the things you really have to consider and take the time. That can cost yeah. a little bit of money, especially if you're not handy with the tools or you have an electrical license to practice, I don't know, electricity. But yeah, <laughs> no matter how much you pay for the mount, make sure you RTFM and use the proper size screws, preferably screwed into the studs, because there is nothing more pathetic. And I know at least one of you out there is going to hang your head and shame when I say this, then mounting your HD TV with the like the little drywall screws, oh, the little black ones, because I know some of you have done it. Use the, 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 the drywall screws and then in the middle of a movie have the whole thing just fall off the wall. It's been done, people. I would snicker. What do you think about the, the ones that like tilt up and down and left and right? I mean, the ones that tilt up a little bit so you can plug cables in and out to be oh, handy. But what about the ones with all like the, the crazy viewing angles? If you need to get behind the screen for any reason, like hooking up additional cables or a accessories that can come in handy or if you live in like a, my friend's house that we did an articulating arm system on where the, you could bring it out you could just almost 90 degrees left or right
right. You can see it in the bathroom. And, and you can see it in the kitchen. But the kitchen in particular, he's got his living room and kitchen in one large room, and he's able to turn it like that, although he rarely ever does it. It is handy, though, for just getting in behind. Like, he got his new little flip video camera. He can just pull the TV out real quick, put it, put it right into the TV right. itself, and demonstrate like that. There can be some considerations there. No matter what wall mount you get, though, at the bare minimum, you want it to be able to tilt yeah. down, especially if you're going to end up mounting it higher than advised. You need to be able to tilt it so that the, the panel is <laughs> perpendicular to your eyeballs. That's the most important thing. For color and detail as well as just, uh, I don't know, aesthetics. Aesthetics. That. Perpendicular <laughs> to your eyeballs. I think we're going to end it on perpendicular to your eyeballs. That is it for this show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, I've got the best question ever. Okay. What do babies, porn, and the army have in common? Yes, they're all on this week's episode of Raffle, the funniest show on the internet. It's bringing you the best in stand-up comedy from around the world. It is epically funny, and you can find it Mondays on revision3.com slash raffle. Is that bikini babes firing baby cannons? I, no? Oh, you have a poll question. I do. I'm curious to know if you are a first generation Blu-ray player owner, and if you are, you have one of the very first devices that came out. If you still own it and it's around, does it still work? We would love to know because we've been talking to some of our friends and people writing in saying that some of those first generation players, the very first generation, if they're not being updated anymore, they tend not to work with a lot of the movies that are out there nowadays. And if that's the case, we have some ideas for ways you could put those older players to good use, but we just want to know. So please, do email us with your info at hdnation at revision3.com. And, and that's pretty much it for this show. So it is. We're gonna hope you guys, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know, along with your Blu-ray ownership, we want to know what you think. So send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. Or you can hang out with other viewers in the HD Nation forums at revision3.com slash forum. And you can find links galore in the show notes at revision3.com slash hdnation. So until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. We'll see you next week on HD Nation. And for Don Stewart at Stewart Film Screen, high five.